This episode is brought to you by Bevel. Bevel is the first and only shaving system for men with coarse and curly hair. Guys like Mickey and I are always getting cuts from normal razors. Bevel is an amazing shave for people like us. Bevel is even clinically proven. After using, four out of five men reported reduced razor bumps, discoloration, and irritation. For 20% off your first box of Bevel supplies, go to getbevel.com and the offer code ICE. This also would make a great gift for the holidays. That's G-E-T-B-E-V-E-L dot com, offer code I-C-E. Please support them since they're supporting us. Upon initial contact with Ice-T's music, I had envisioned him to be an ill-mannered and psychologically unstable man with an extremely uneducated and barbaric frame of mind. His raps displayed nothing but ridiculous jargon, shocking sexual audacity, and repulsive images of the ghetto. However, after further analysis of his music, I can deduce that he is the epitome of anti-disestablishment terrorism, who embodies the entire spectrum of the urban experience and struggle. But to make things more plain and simple to the layman, I find Ice-T to be the dopest, flyest, OG pimp, hustler, gangster player, hardcore motherfucker living today. To be honest, I am totally and completely on his dick. Welcome to the Ice-T Final Level Podcast, featuring your co-host, Mick Benzo, and your host, Ice-T. Hey yo, this is Ice-T and Mick Benzo, and you're listening to Final Level Podcast number 21. What's going down, Mick? Just like Las Vegas, baby. You know you get 6, 7, 8, that's 21. You win. That's you what's happening. beat the dealer. We're beating the dealer right now. They told us we would only do five podcasts, and we'd be done with this. We're on 21. Somebody needs to shut the fuck up. I'm telling you, we're beating the dealer. 21. Dealer. Blackjack, baby. It's in the building. Yo, man, this is crazy. We've had great episodes. We come up, we've come up with different ways of doing this now. We've done the all caller episode, which has been really fun. Our last episode had the infamous my friend Chris Chris Rock. Chris Rock, man, he was on number twenty. It's going. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Today we have a special guest. My friend just came off. You know, we was out together. He showed up on the Mayhem Fest tour. The lead singer. Of hate breed, the infamous and notorious Jamie Jassa is in the building. That's what's up. And now Jamie called in one time. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, right. Because he had said he did a, uh, a verse with you. He wanted to use that verse. Yeah, he, we fucked around. We fucked around. He came over to my house before, brought a a a, 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 a fucking studio, sat it right there on the on the on the on the kitchen thing, mm-hmm. and gave me a mic and had me screaming in my living room. But you know, I met Jamie back in the day when he was doing Headbangers Ball. How did how did that happen, Headbangers Ball for you? How did they pick you out of all the headbangers? Well basically I was on the road, I heard that they were looking for a host and they were having different bands host a show. Metallica ended up hosting a show where they played the Hatebreed video for Perseverance, which was huge. The the record was at the tail end of the cycle. It re-entered the Billboard chart at that time. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, it re-entered the top 200, and it shot up the hard chart. And so I guess because they figured I knew a lot of people and that I was touring with a lot of the bands that they would have on the show anyways, that I would be a good choice. But they wanted me to do an audition tape and there was nobody around. I was trying to get Al Jorgensen. He was he was right. playing the Palladium in, uh, right. in Worcester, and he's actually open to it. He said, From yeah. ministry. Yeah. I met Al. Yeah, he, mm-hmm. he, he, I gotta say, that was really cool of him to even agree to do it, but I couldn't get out there, but then I saw Vanilla Ice was in Hartford, and I, I called him, and I'm like, dude, please, because we had done some shows, Hatebreed mm-hmm. and Vanilla Ice, weird mm-hmm. combination, but we did some shows, and they were great. Mm-hmm. This is when he was trying to do it's rock. S- some rock stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I interviewed him, I sent the tape in, and I think that's what got me the gig oh, that, that's but really you know I, I feel a, I feel a connection to Jamie because Jamie's like an artist but he just likes to do lots of things I mean when he was over here he was telling me about how to do merchandising and he was <laughs> on some indie record stuff and you know he's produced a lot of, of, of rock versions of hip hop Songs. That's kind of fly, man. And, you know, he's just a hustler. Yeah, I like, like hustlers. Yeah, that's dope. But honestly, but he did a record on the Body Count album too, though. Yeah. Well, we're gonna talk about that later. You know, where he came in and just rocked with me, and I've worked with him with his side group, Ice Pick. But you know, when you meet Jamie, you understand why he does and he works because he's such a personable, very cool person. You know, a lot of people that are artists. 
they're kind of quiet or mm-hmm. removed, but Jamie gets right in there and stuff. So, you know, today we're going to do the podcast, and I said we need a guest. And yeah, uh, next thing you know, he's driving from Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. What was the commercial where it's, you are right, I learned it by watching you. <laughs> all the hustling, all the, all, the, all the diversifying. Yeah. I learned it from you, my it's friend. It's fun so. to be diversified, though. Yeah. And it's, plus, you know how it is with music. If you, you, you know that. If you, I say if you could survive 10 years with music, that's like five years too many. So I figured go into TV, have a backup plan, have something. I mean, luckily with Hatebreed, I've I've been you know I haven't worked a regular job since yeah. 96, 95. Wow. But oh, you really? work. Well, I mean, but, we saw y'all in concert, no, and no. Hatebreed is not to be fucked with. <laughs> Thank you. Well, coming from you, that's an honor. Oh, no, nah, come on, man. It's real, though. It's not fake. It's real. It's real. Mickey good. for that's Mickey's first good. time seeing. It, he was like, "Yo, I'm like they're yeah. amazing." I'm like, "Whoa!" Yeah, <laughs> that was a fun show. Yeah, Heavy Montreal was amazing. All the all everybody who played. I mean, that's just like one of the best festivals that there is out there. I wish that we had something like that here. Yeah, you know? it's crazy. So there's so much to talk about Jamie Jasta. You know, he's on uh, on, on Twitter with everybody at Jamie Jasta. And, uh, you know, there's so much to talk about with him. We're going to get into him later on in the podcast. But uh, right now, you ready to sit in and ride with us? Through I this? am. You know how we do here. We just talk about everything real quick and fast. And we get the Mick Benzo opinion, which is Love it. always wonderful. <laughs> uh, so this is podcast number 21. And uh, here we go. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. They're the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website. Now, if you can use Facebook, you can build a website on Squarespace. I built IcedTFinalLevel.com and PBHGear.com on Squarespace. And my podcast network built their site, ParagonCollective.com, on Squarespace, too. Okay? We using it, all right, for real. It's the easiest and best website builder out there, so you should definitely check them out. Start with a free trial at squarespace.com with no credit card required. When you're ready to purchase a plan, get 10% off with the offer code ICE. That's squarespace.com, offer code I-C-E. Hey, this is Final Level Podcast number 21, and this is sports. Oh, I got some good sports, man. I'm, I'm kind of missing my guy right now, man. Derek? He played 20 seasons as a New York Yankee, the captain of the ship. He's my a bad man, man. Derek Jeter. And he was a bad man. And, he, and you know what? I've never He's never really got into the press on any negative anything. Now, he I mean, played a very well season for 20 of them. I met Jeter, and Jeter was just the coolest dude laid back, so confident. I mean, this dude would go entire seasons without one error. How do you do that at shortstop? Amazing class act. They had us on the field at the Cleveland Indian Stadium, went out there. And we saw Jer- we saw Derek early in the day at uh, our bass player and our guitar player saw him at Starbucks. And, w- and when we got there, he recognized us. And, he, you know, we're out there. I-, I got video of it, like of watching them uh, warm up and everything. Came over, said hello. Just the coolest class act. Oh, just class. Think about this, too. He had that injury, right? The ankle injury. A couple papers tried to herb him out, like, you know, saying that he gained weight or whatever. But he never pissed hot. He never had a dirty test. All these guys try to lose weight. They go on diuretics. They go on steroids, whatever. He never cheated. He was always a class act. Derek Jeter, man. I miss my man, DJ. So what you think Derek's going to do now? Just, you know, he got cake. He can just sit back. But people like that don't sit back. What do you think well, he's going to do? No, become an we, owner or something? Just no, orgies no. on a yacht. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's he's single, too, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But when I was doing, at MTV, he was dating the girl who was doing TRL. I think he's dating whoever he wants. Yeah. Derek can date any guy. <laughs> but he's so smooth with it, too. Just cool as a cucumber. But man. he keeps it yeah. cool. Now, what he's doing now, he's setting up some things, I guess, so that other players can interact more with their fans. He came up with something. It's on the Internet that he came up and got a website that he's doing because he couldn't stay just sitting home twiggling his thumbs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and he might come back. No, he might come back as a he might come back as a manager. I think he'll come back as a manager. I don't think he's going to own any team. I think he'll come back as a manager. He's a good role model, though. I mean, to, you know, I think that people think that when you become successful, you got to be in the press. You got to have all this drama. And I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, you just, 
you can fly smooth and under the radar, but it's really about your performance, you know? Mm -hmm. And that man performed. I always use him as an example. I'm like, professional sports is one of the hardest jobs to keep because somebody can walk and take your job if they're better. You know, if they're better, you just go in there and prove it. And to be the captain of the Yankees, that's not a slump team, you know? He... We can't do nothing but send out love to Derek Jeter. God bless you. Hopefully you continue to have a great life. You did so much for so many people as far as being a champion. And you went out on a fly note. And that's rare yeah, today. Yeah, he's a winner, baby. On and the Derek, way out, they try Derek to Jeter, crush Derek, you. Yeah. Derek, if you come back, make sure you're the Yankees manager. Don't go nowhere else. <laughs> and that was sports. Okay, this is Final Level Podcast number 21, and uh, we're talking about movies. And uh, on the last podcast, we were trying to come up with the name of this movie that Keanu Reeves is in, and uh, Jamie Jasta knows the name. Yes, it's John Wick. Yeah, and it's a gangster movie, and it's uh, directed by a couple of cats. It's not out yet. Uh, it might be out by the time this podcast airs, but it's it's a tough movie. And the cool thing is, this dude goes on a rampage because these motherfuckers kill his dog. They kill his dog. Like, they kill his dog, <laughs> <laughs> and that's enough hey, hey, for him so, to hey, don't that, fuck with my dog. <laughs> it makes sense to me because some of them dogs are humans to people. That's their family, be for real, for, for real. Sure. Yeah, somebody you know? fuck with Spartacus. I'm and going. Max, in. Max and Sparty can cause your life. <laughs> I, I'll tell you I'll tell you a little story something like that Africa Band Body used to have a cat called Powacket right <laughs> in Bronx River New York in the Bronx wait a minute what name Powacket Powacket so, Powacket with a T so someone stole his cat and he knew who did it you know he took 150 people to that guy's block wow I don't know what happened to the guy but we got the cat back <laughs> <laughs> Why you don't mess with Bam's cat? You don't mess with nobody. No. Pets, man. I got a movie you got to see. See? Tusk. Tusk? Tusk. Okay, what's it about? All right. The guy, Kevin Smith, who was in Clerks. Right. He did a podcast, and on the podcast, he mentions this story where this guy is on Craigslist looking for somebody to live with, a roommate, but the deal is they got to dress up like a walrus, like couple hours out of the week okay so they turned this into a movie but it's really fucking dark and twisted did you see human centipede yeah I, right. on my date night me and coco do date nights <laughs> right on sunday night we go to the movies She's i'm gonna tell gonna her flip we're gonna go see a movie about a war <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna be like what did you take me to Tusk. i don't know if it's still in the theaters but when it comes on DVD, okay final level podcast people go see tusk and uh, tweet me back and let me know if Jamie sent us to some crazy <laughs> bullshit or yeah, some no shit. Before we go see it, y'all let us know, man. T U S K. Because my followers, we we in, we're into the dark movies. Yeah. The crazy shit, the human centipedes, the irreversible martyr, all the heavy, heavy shit. Now, we've already determined that the most disturbing movie ever made is a movie called The Serbian Film. Oh. See? Can I unsee that? <laughs> Can I? Let me put bleach in my eyes after Can watching. You unsee it. Was it bad? Was it that terrible? Just don't ever watch it. Disturbing. Don't don't ever watch it. That means you're gonna want to watch it. But we no. warned you: do not watch Dude, it. What not. about Antichrist? Warning. Did warning. You see that? Now, I haven't seen Antichrist, but I know I know what a Serbian film. I got it. I had to go through five sites on the internet to find it because it's banned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the story of a Serbian porno star who gets connected to the mob and they make him do weird things. Okay, that's enough information. Yeah. You have no Gotta idea horrible. what he has to do. What's Did you see Frontiers? Movie? What's the name of this movie? That that Serbian one's called film. The, the Ser- a, a, Ser- Serbian a Serbian film. film. Okay. Right? Other than that, we're going to go see Tusk. We can give you guys a list of some of the most disturbing wrong movies ever to see. But like Jamie says, you have to unsee these movies <laughs> because it's going to leave a fucked up. You know what I watched on the plane, though, coming back? Um, a movie that I, I watched back in the day, but I watched it over again. And it was... Um, was it Toy Story 2? Once Upon a Time in America. That was a good movie, though. That's a good movie. 
But 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 what's in that movie that people overlook? Do you really know what's in that movie? When you see it now, I see something that most people didn't see in that movie. What could that be? De Niro. Robert was in there? Doing a couple of rapes in yeah. the movie. Heavy wow. shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah, heavy shit. So it's kind of like, you know, and Coco watches this. I don't really see Robert doing it like that. But now if you watch the movie with all this attention and what's going on right now, that movie that's some pretty interesting scenes. He does his girlfriend because she leaves him mm -hmm. and he does a girl during a robbery. I think that's coming off of you from working on Law and Order. You're, o you're, you're you overlooking Jamie knows movie. this movie, yeah. right? It's called Once Upon a... With, with, uh, what's his name? Wood? James Wood? Yeah, it's great a, actor. It's, it's, it's a wonderful movie. It's four hours long. Mm. Once Upon a Time Mary. If you want to see Robert De Niro do some SVU shit, <laughs> see, see? Uh, check that out. But I had a good time. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's um, Smooth the Hustler named his album Once Upon a Time in America. Mm -hmm. And that was movies. Final Level Podcast number 21 with Jamie Jasta, a hate breed in the building with me. Yes. And uh, we're going to uh, talk about TV right now. This segment is television. I've been watching this crazy ass show. It just came on last night. I've been watching it. It's called The Town of the Living Dead. And it's a show. It's on the Sci-Fi Channel. And it's about some people that decided to make a zombie movie. But they live in this Christian town. And this is what got me. They've been working on this movie for six years. Six years. <laughs> and, and just now getting it on Sci-Fi Channel? And it ain't done. It's only, the guy said it's only like 40%. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they ain't got no money. They out buying ketchup to make the blood. They trying to make coffee grinds and everything together. They threw the blood on the people that look like shit. <laughs> they got just neighborhood people trying to be zombies. It is the funniest show, but just to watch people struggle to make a film, it lets you know how hard it is to make a movie. And one guy's a director, the guy's a writer. <laughs> this one lady, she's financing the entire movie. She's somebody's grandmother. So you, What's the so budget? They, <laughs> so they actually struggling to make that movie while I'm watching Good Time, and they struggling to live in the damn projects, man. I'm watching Good Time while you watching that. They struggling in projects. They've been making this movie for six years. <laughs> Fuck good times. <laughs> They've been making this movie for six years, and then lady said so far she spent $25,000. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. So that's like less than 5000 a year. But Not on the movie. Uh, we mm -hmm. got to see this. Turn it on. Put it into your TiVo. It's called The Town of the Living Dead. It's on sci-fi, and it's something to watch, and I liked it, and... um. They just got a good plug from you, you know. I mean, right. maybe now, what if they do like a Kickstarter or something because of all this, you know, we go exposure for they're getting? We go for I'm gonna back. watch that movie, man, just to see. I mean, you know, sometimes movies are so bad that they're good. You know, did you see Birdemic? <laughs> <laughs> that guy followed me on Twitter and I was like, yo, I'll, I'll tweet about it. And he sent me the DVD, but I didn't watch it. Birdemic? It yeah. can't be worse than Sharknado. No, it's it's this got voted the worst movie ever. Birdemic. You got to check it out. The, I think the worst movie ever was supposed to be uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space with Bella Lugosi. Really? Mm -hmm. The one where Bella Lugosi died halfway through the movie and the rest of the movie was a dude with a cape. <laughs> <laughs> Hold this <laughs> that, Plan 9 from Outer Space. We're talking about that. bad movies. Yeah, that's, that's bad. Oh, they got this one thing where they're supposed to be in a spaceship and it's a room and shit's moving around and ray guns and bullshit. But that's one thing to watch on television. Another one is a TV show called Gotham. And uh, Donald Logue. You know what? I did see that on Fox. On Fox. I see yeah. it. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a prequel to Batman. Right. And let you know what was happening in Gotham City. But Donald, who was played the chief for a minute on Law and Order, he went over there. Now he's playing a cop on that show. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it. I like the following. Kevin well, we, Bacon. We, yeah, we we've promoted the following on here yeah, before. That was good. That was good. Is it back on yet? Soon, I think. No, it ain't on yet. It no, didn't come, no, I don't think it got picked up. Oh no, you know what was on uh, American Horror Story that premiered recently. That Coco was... loves that. The new one is called Freak Show. Yes. Oh shit! It's got yeah. the world's smallest. 
lady. They're not freaks, okay? They say yes. we're not freaks, okay? They call themselves freaks. Human. They come out at night. <laughs> yeah, the freaks come out at night. <laughs> Dini said it. The freaks come out at night. So there you go. We got four TV shows you should watch. We got The Town of the Living Dead. This is some like documentary reality shit about some people trying to make a zombie movie. Gotham. Gotham. Got Donald from my show. He's got a new gig. Person of interest. Person of interest. That's Mickey's pick. And then uh, what was the last one? Good times. Not fucking good times. American time. Horror Story. American Horror Story <laughs> freaks. Tune in to them and uh, enjoy television. That was TV. Hey, guys, I talk about Squarespace all the time on the Final Level podcast. That's because they really are the business. Now, we've been getting a lot of great emails at iceandmick at gmail.com that you guys send us about your Squarespace sites. Here's one from Joey McKinney. Hey, Ice and Mick, you guys are the reason me and my crew started our own podcast. And because of you, we're also using Squarespace. We love it. Squarespace is the perfect web host for all our podcasts, and it fits our needs. Thank you for the great music, podcasts, and all-around dedication to hip-hop. You guys are true OG pioneers and a huge inspiration. Thanks, Joe. That was dope. Also, uh, you can go check out Joe's site at liquidsunshinepodcast.com. They got their episodes up there, contact form, of the whole works. Seriously, if you need a beautiful and easy way to create a website for yourself for your own business, Squarespace is your golden ticket. Start with a free trial, no credit card required. Just go to squarespace.com. When you're blown away and ready to confirm a plan, use the offer code ICE to get 10% off. You'll be getting a great deal and you'll be supporting the podcast, helping to keep it free. That's S-Q-U-A-R-E-S-P-A-C-E dot com, offer code I-C-E. And don't forget to send your Squarespace site to us. That's at ICE and Mick at gmail.com and we might even talk about your site on the show that's squarespace.com offer code ice all right so now on the final level podcast we're very honored to have our guest uh jamie jasser who, uh, like I said earlier in the show, I met back during the Headbangers Ball. We had the privilege of working together on one of his side projects. And then he just came back and blessed the Body Count album with some crazy lyrics on the song Pop Bubble Full of Bullshit. And uh, he's in the house. So it's time for me to interview you. Thank you for having me. You are too kind. So Hate Breed, that, let's just start with that. How long has the band been around? When did it start? This November will be the 20th anniversary. Damn. Yeah. 20 years? Yeah. Not a new band. Damn. No. And, uh, you know, we were... But you only look 21. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was fucking 23 years old, man. <laughs> I am, uh, just turned 37, so... But, uh, you know, I So that I means you started the band when you were 17? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And me and the bass player, we, we were in other bands, whatever, and we got together with a drummer in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We used to just jam in the basement, and, and our guitar player, Wayne, our original guitar player, he's back in the band now. So us three, we still got three of the original guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt used to be in a band called All Out War, and Frank was in a band called Terror. He was also in a band called Ringworm. Matt joined in 2000, right before the Perseverance album. Frank joined in 2006. So, you know, we're going to celebrate the... the 20th anniversary coming up. We're trying to do some local shows around here, but we're already booked on a tour with Zach Wild, which is going to be playing. I think the closest show is probably Hartford or Philly or something. That's hot, man. but it's that that tour is going out day after Christmas. That's you know, and, and the thing of it is, when people hear the word tour, they think, they it's think thirty days. Thirty days. Sometimes <laughs> tours are four days. Sometimes yeah. it's a weekend tour. You know, you might hit three or four cities in South America or whatever and stuff. We're going to talk about your South America experience lightly, but um, you know, when you're doing music full time, I always tell people you can't just play down the street. 
nah, you know you got to you, move you around, move around move cause around. the homies down the street done heard you rehearse they done heard you practice they know who you are you have to leave town and you have to spend a lot of time on the road so so when you first started I always like to ask people what was your I mean now of course we got tour buses and things but what was it like when you guys were first starting oh I mean we did station wagons we did <laughs> we did uh BD, our bass player, he would, you know, he would show up in the ambulance because he worked, you know, as a uh, as a medic or, you know, I mean, we would we would literally like we would borrow everybody's gear, like we would show up and and we would just borrow the other band's gear, like we, a lot of times we didn't even show up with equipment. I mean, it was it was wild style back then, I mean, was, and they allowed you to play some, on their equipment. Some bands did. It was, what like, happened when they did? There was a band that became very famous. This band AFI. Mm-hmm. They they were they had like mega hits, platinum albums. We went down to Florida with no gear, and okay. we had one show. We drove all the way to Florida for this one show. The show was off the hook. Blood let, let us borrow their gear, a band from Florida. But then we saw AFI was playing, and they were playing a Christian coffee house, and we were like, fuck it, let's go and see if they... And they let us jump up on their gear. I mean, how cool is that? And we played a set. We opened that for AFI. Cool. And, Have you ever you know, been turned down when somebody said, nah, you missed a gig like that? You know, it's... Yeah, a couple times, but... <laughs> actually, one time we showed up late. I won't say... Who the band was? No, no, no. We don't do that. We don't do that. We don't do that. But they made us headline, and that was that was um, that was an eye opener. But the one thing that was amazing was we kept the crowd. The crowd stayed. They were like, "Really? You're going to play after so and so? How can you do that?" And so the crowd stayed, and we. Oh wait, wait, wait! Another pause. So what happens is because you showed up late, the headliner punished us. The headliner punished you by making you play after them. Yes. So they made you headline. Yes. Now people might not understand what that Closing can do. Closing a, a, a show? show after a big act. Mm-hmm. In this business, you want to play your position. If you're a new act, you don't want to go on after the headliner because the headliner that's why everyone showed that's what people bought the tickets for people could potentially walk out on you yeah have and, no and, crowd and also you don't want to play too close to the headliner because people are anxious to see the headliner so you could get booed and they can start chanting the next band's name if you're going too long so it's very interesting when you're not when you're building a fan base you know, it's to play yeah. your position. Play your position. Well, that gave us the confidence. <laughs> like that, that really gave us the confidence. I used to drive into Brooklyn multiple times during a week, and I would intern at a booking agency, and I started seeing how like the the inner workings of uh, of the clubs and the tours and stuff. And and uh, I'll shout out Ken Creedy and and um, and John Finberg. They gave me an opportunity, and I would go to Lemoore's, and I would see Biohazard and Life of Agony and Typo Negative, and and my goal was to, I love Typo Negative. Typo was great. We took them on the Jaeger tour in 2008. Mm-hmm. We 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 co-headlined with them, and and we closed the show. But that part of that was having the confidence, knowing that you can be the headliner. Sometimes that's a big jump for an act. She's in love take. with yeah. herself. Yeah. And uh, she you know, likes the dark. <laughs> that's my shit. I got and a good story about Pete Steele, I should tell you. Neck, Pete the Steele, devil's mark. Rest that's in peace. That's my shit. There'll, there'll never be another voice like him. Rest in peace. He He's... One of the coolest guys we ever toured with. One night, you know, he was he was a fan of Redheads, you know. So mm-hmm. he had and, and he was in Playgirl. I don't know if you know this. He was naked in Playgirl. <laughs> we don't so know that. He had a f- extremely large female fan base that would come because he, you know he at one time he was this handsome, you know, very you know muscular, uh, gothic guy. And so one night, this this cute redhead was sitting on his lap and. Since we were technically closing the show, I thought, you know, it'd be funny to go over and say, you know, hey, let me, why don't you come with me? And so the girl's like, okay. And she started coming with me. And he goes, you're off the tour. <laughs> <laughs> you can't steal it. You, you can't jack his bitch, man. No, can't man. Jack that don't baby. always cause a problem. Can't jack him, baby. But anyways, what I was going to say about Lemoore's was that was my goal. Like, I, my goal, starting with the band, I said, I want to headline Roseland and sell it out, which we did. And I want to headline Lemoore's and sell it out, which we did. So, like, anything beyond that is just, like, gravy at this point. We could break up tomorrow, and I would be I just happy wanna, with just I, that. I, you still didn't answer the question. You said you taught, you walk, you rode in a bus or a truck or a car to get somewhere with no gear. And I said, have you been turned down from a gear to play? Yeah, have you ever got no. stuck? 
No, we, we actually, we've lucked out. We went, we did a whole Danzig tour where we showed up in a van on top of the gear. And this is how cool Danzig is. I know a lot of people say he's hard to deal with. But for us, when he saw that, he said, you guys are sleeping on top of your gear in a van. He's like, put your gear in my truck. Mm-hmm. And then we like he would leave like in the dressing room would have tons of drinks and food and stuff. And he said, take it all. I met Glenn before. I mean, he was good to us. You know what, man? People like to see people grinding and struggling. I mean, even just we just came off Mayhem Fest, and there was one group out there, and they were all driving around in a truck. You know, you know, we had a tour bus, and we seen them, and I just decided I want to go and just be nice to them. You know, because we've all done that. I've done the twelve passenger van. I've done the cars. We did a tour where a uh, rap tour where me and Smooth the Hustler and my group. We would fly to different cities, rent a car, take that car to maybe three shows, drop the car off, get on another plane, go to the next place. But the problem was every time we would drop the cars off, they were totaled out. They were were, were totaled out and stuff. But we toured all through the Ozarks and shit like that. And, you know, you got to get it done. And then you have your overhead of the the expenses it takes to go on tour and a lot of time they don't want to pay you any money you're out there trying to get you get you get it going and it's just a grind man it is. And, and 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 i think all bands have gone through it that's why you respect it when you finally work your way up to getting a tour bus or having a room like how about rooms yeah. just like do y'all got a hotel room like it's crazy and people have this 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 bent belief that just because you're playing in front of lots of people you're making lots and lots of money but it, it's 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 a hard grind because you not it's it's not like one person walks on stage it's a band and it's and it's roadies and it's people mm-hmm. and then you start to say oh, okay we're bigger now so let's bring production so like when we were just out there, what was the headliner of Mayhem Fest? Uh, Avenged Sevenfold. Avenged Sevenfold. Avenged they had a fucking castle. Unbelievable. Yeah. They had a castle. So it all has to weigh out where, you know, you could spend so much money bringing all this production. And, and that requires six semi trucks yeah. and all that shit. But they were smart. They reinvested in the show, mm-hmm. and that built them up to headliner status. I've always given them the respect, and I've mm-hmm. had John Reese sevenfold. Yeah, yeah, and I, I had John Reese uh, on my show, and uh, we talked about you guys being like one of the standout bands on mm-hmm. the on the tour and stuff. And and he was saying, you know, the reason why he gave Avenged that slot like that because they were willing to take a little bit out of their check mm-hmm. and make a show mm-hmm. and give the fans something that I remember. I mean, obviously it resonated with you. You're like, they got a fucking castle. I mean, people really, it really does resonate <laughs> yeah, with right. people. Yeah, yeah, I thought you I was remember, watching Iron you Maiden. Remember, you yeah. remember it because it's a show. Yeah. yeah but co- like you said, though, it's starving artists if you want to be in this game. Uh-huh. And you did it. You said you rode on, Everybody you slept did. on top of your gear in the van yeah. because you had no place to put it. But yeah. then people look at, oh man, Jamie got it, man. Look at Jay. He could look, he could hook us up. You're like, damn it, ain't nobody hooked me up. Right. I bust my ass to get here. Yeah. And I'm gonna bust my ass to stay here. Yeah, no, when I when I deal with a lot of younger bands, I don't do it as much because my label's pretty much like done with and I'm and I'm and I can't. Right, I don't want anybody feature with you. <laughs> yeah. <go>. Yeah. <laughs> and but like at that time, like the younger bands would see us on the bus and they and they would see us, you know, packing clubs or big theaters or whatever and they would want that and I said but you don't understand what I went through went into getting this 20 years yeah. Try that. 20, 20. Yeah. I mean we we just came back this summer we had a you know we headlined a bunch of big festivals in Germany some of the shows I mean we some of the shows that we headlined festivals had 30,000 40,000 people some of the ones where we opened like the one you guys saw Heavy Montreal still with with Slayer there's still 20,000 people so it's strong but you don't just get to that point like no, you no. don't just skip over it listen listen when they came when we when we restarted body count up we hadn't been out in eight years we hadn't had a good record out maybe more than 10 years so they said hey ice um we want you to tour this summer i said well look i can't i i I still have my day job law and order i have these two months open let's get on any tour possible so they say mayhem fest is perfect for you so i'm like well what are they going to pay us and they're like really it's not a lot of money but my agenda was like look if I did a ice tea, if I did a body count show, the only people that are going to see me are the fans of the band. I need to get in front of a bunch of people that 
don't know about us, might know about us. I need to be in front of the other band's audiences also. And we just took it and we said, you know what, as long as we can walk away from this even, and we didn't, we had to get a little tour support and all that other stuff. But uh, we got in front of that audience. And that, and guess what? Now the offers are coming in for some real paper, you yeah. know, that can cover our bills and our mm-hmm. overhead. Now people look at me, well, I used 25 years in the game. You, you, you're not, you know, you, you taking that cut. I'm like, that's part of the game. Yeah. That's music. You got to weigh it out. Like right now we're relaunching my band. I got to start yeah. back at the right. bottom again. It's not again. like we put records out every year for eight years. We stop. Yeah. We stop. And now the lane is open. Like you got to do like Ice Fest where, yeah, well, yeah. where you, you know, take out an eight band package. But we had to go out there and kill. We had to go out there and prove that we belong with the new bands and we can we can rock a crowd with the new bands again. And that we had to prove that to ourselves too. Yeah. And like, we're walking out there with a new album that had only been out like three weeks before the tour started. We're going to try to play those songs and our old shit, you know, and every day I would say, you know, how many people have seen us before? None. Yeah. How many people like us? And that's all the hands would go up. I'm like, that's why that's we're here. Yeah. That's new why audience. we're here. So you have to, you have to, to, to Farm those fans and work them. I mean, like we, like Mickey had never seen seen a uh, uh, hate breed I ain't before. Never seen hate breed, yeah, but I now you it, know. I seen it <laughs> much. Y'all, yeah. is, is that real? I love the way y'all took the picture. That was yeah, fly. With the crowd. I'm trying to steal that. Oh, though. and you know what? <laughs> you know what? I got to do it. You know where we took that from? Be honest. We took that from Iron Maiden. Okay, so you did steal it from when, somebody. Well, yeah, because li- listen to this. When Iron Maiden got on Facebook. They only had like whatever two, three hundred thousand people, but when they started taking the pictures with the crowd and letting the people tag them in them, you gotta like the page to tag yourself in the photo. So you figure they're they're in you know Norway and they're playing right. fifty thousand people. They just got fifty thousand new likes on their page, so their page went viral. I'm sure they probably had, now they probably have fifteen million people right. on there. Easily, but that was like it created this huge demographic of people on Facebook. No, let me let fat. me ask I saw you. That that was fat. I ask you a couple quick questions that might be a little bit controversial just 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 because you are have been embedded in the metal scene and you know everybody and a mother the same way I know everybody in hip hop I've been in metal but I'm I'm still I don't I'm not in as depth you know I'm fortunate I know a lot of the big boys you know when we first got in when 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 like groups like Slayer and groups like Henry Rollins and all of them gave us the thumbs up, we were like, we're good. Yeah. But I notice in the rock world, it just doesn't seem to be as much. I hate to say it, but as much petty bullshit as it is in hip hop. Like people seem to be more cool with each other. Is is that is there are there bands that don't get along and is any of you know what I'm talking about how yeah. hip hop people hate each other yeah. and always be, oh, I ain't touring with this dude. I can't see I didn't notice that in rock. You know, it, it's funny that you mentioned that because I tried to pitch a project called Rock Beef, the DVD, cuz the Beef DVDs were huge, mm-hmm. right? And this is at the time when DVDs were still selling and Best Buy was carrying them. And it was hard to get off the ground. It was hard to get a script written. It was hard to make it happen because there wasn't enough Rock beef. beef. And people didn't want to talk about it on camera. Like, who are you going to talk? You're going to say, okay, Nikki Six from Molly Crew, he hates Sully from Godsmack. Okay, maybe that's one segment. What are you going to do? Four minutes, five minutes on that. You got Slipknot at one point, they had a beef with Limp Biscuit, but that's squashed. It's old news. So it's like, now I think what's happened is everybody's grown up and they've gotten, a lot of guys are sober now. Right. And then they've yeah, gotten yeah, the party and the crazy. And the, yeah, they got the drugs ago. out of the system. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like when we, like when we, t- when we finally got on tour with, say, like a band like Corn, we did Europe with them, and mm-hmm. we did it Australia. The partying days were over. We had heard like nightmare stories about them. Everybody's cool. They're sweet. So they're cool. The nicest guys no, ever. I because them. I think it's just all out of their system. So you're not dealing with these rock star egos anymore. Like, I, I, and that's why I think maybe that there there isn't any sort of rock beef anymore. If there was, I don't think it would lead to record sales like it did in hip hop. No, I think rock. I think rock motherfuckers is more like prove it on the stage. Yeah, I don't think they spend a lot of time talking about each other in the inter- on the press and all that bullshit that hip hoppers do. They talk a lot, but I think you know rock motherfuckers is like, oh, nice meeting you. Just sat to watch my show, blah, and they just rip the fucking show <laughs> like you do, and, and then you go. 
Wow. Okay, stay clear of them motherfuckers. Good. And then, they, then they're back at catering. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> okay, this is my kid, and this, that, and the other. And then they go, and they just, I like that, though. You just prove it on the playing field, man. Yeah. We don't talk about it. We prove it on the playing field. You think I'm, I suck? Come to my show, motherfucker, and watch what I do. And I, I like that. Yeah, no, there there's some competition elements in there. You don't hear about it because people don't want to talk about it publicly. Like, I had an issue where a band... We found out they were um, someone in the band. Sabotaging. Or, yeah, they were. They were. They were lowering our volume. Sabotaging. Oh, and, um, Bullshit. And I actually, I, it burned me for a long time. But now I actually like look at it as a compliment. They were um, worried about you. Yeah, and also they came and they cut down all the merch designs. They said, "No, you're done." I said, "Oh, well, we're contracted for six or seven designs or whatever." Nope, you're selling two. You're selling one because we're just blowing out of merchandise. <laughs> so you know that. That's one thing we've been very blessed with with Hatebreed is that even if you don't know of the band, you've seen the logo, you okay. know the flames, and and the merchandise is it keeps everybody living okay. it. Here's a, here's a question that's very might be taboo, but I'm gonna ask it anyway because you're an OG. What when we got out there? What's up with playback? All right, so tape. I, we just talked about this on my show. Actually. Okay, so let's talk about and, this because uh, I was unaware, right? Like I'm like. You know, I'm out there and I'm like watching all these guys playing and I'm like, this shit is so dope. And we play live. Every fucking thing you hear is live. But then I was noticing some people weren't. (laughs) Yeah. How does that play in the rock world? How do they feel about that? That See, that's a great segment for I'm not a hater. (laughs) And so this is the thing. Like I I had Jim Florentine, who's a big fan of yours. He's a comedian. He hosted that metal show on Mm -hmm. uh, VH1. And he he said on my show, oh, I love the Body Count album. That's one of his top records of the year. Mm-hmm. And we talked about on that episode how, you know, Motley Crue came on that metal show and, and Mick Mars said, I don't like that the backups are on tape. I mean, he's in the band and doesn't even have a choice. Mm. to Because, you know, when you go out there and you see Motley Crue and you, you, you hear, he's the one that called Dr. Feelgood, you know, that's a tape mm-hmm. playing that. And a lot of bands don't want their spot blown up, but, I mean, it is hard day in and day out to hit the key to hit the notes especially with the backups and you don't you know maybe you don't want to bring out backup singers maybe you don't have the budget to bring out extra players for but the some extra of track. it's not backup some of it is the actual thickness of yes. the record yes yeah, and that you're right about saying it's very taboo like I've been told by high powered managers and agents like hey you know don't don't embarrass these guys out in public, or whatever. And I never would. No, I would I'm never not, say a name of a band. It's definitely commonplace, and a lot of people's favorite bands are using at least backing tracks. I asked a band called A Day to Remember, who are huge right now. They're selling out like smaller arenas and big theaters. And he says, "Oh, I, I admit it." He's like, "I'll, I'll tell you. Like, we have some lower screams and some backup vocals that we have, you know, coming through the laptop. But everything else is real. And if you go watch them." Live, like they did You'll Reading and Leeds, like eighty thousand people. He's hitting some clams You'll here and there. It's not, it's not totally um, on key, and so you know his main vocal is real, and the guitar player, you can hear like little flubs here and there. So you know it is real. But there are some bands that do need a little boost with the backing tracks. When we play live and ice screams every goddamn night. Yeah, no backup tracks, about <laughs> nothing. Well, what's... voice m- wake makes up wakes up for the next day and do the same thing. It's unfair. That's like that's like R and B music. It, it, it is kind of unfair in a way. That's R and B. That's not you know, rock. You, you that's not at, fair. Well, look at like a band like Nirvana. They would have never run tape. They would have never run tracks. Even I even... think I think now my point I think is certain rock like if you're like industrial stuff like. Mm-hmm. I, like we went out early with uh, tr- with uh, nine inch nails and stuff like that, and that's a lot of electronic shit, you know. So it has a different type of a feel than necessarily metal and stuff. So when sometimes that stuff it gets kind of ding 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 ding. But I mean, I'm not. Hey, I just wanted to ask his opinion. I don't know whether it's fair or not. I, I'm not. I don't know whether it's okay. But you know, I when I go to see a rock band. That's part of the stigma. It's like enjoying to see that's a real guitar playing. That's a real drummer. That guy is really that good. He sounds that good and stuff. And, and I'm not even so much with the vocals. I'm talking about the actual groove. Right, the, the, yeah. You know, band, the band, and, and the like instruments. We, I'm, we were on the stage every night right after we played. We go watch Cannibal Corpse 
and oh, they, they rip it. They rip that shit and every he's night. Doing George is all there all yeah. day doing and him. They lock no, in, in the back. No and pitch them, shifter. Nothing in the back. That's it's really all his. It's all guitar and drums and vocals. And no yeah. pedals. Yeah, it's really that. <laughs> his his voice is really that guttural. Yeah. All, you and guys, he wakes up the next day and does it again. You yeah. gotta see this Hendrix experience. There's a guitar player. I think his name's Eric Gales. Mm-hmm. The kid is. I mean, he's probably not a kid. I mean, he's probably. I don't know. Maybe right. he's in his mid thirties. But he the singing good. Hendrix and good. and there was no laptops on he's the stage. Good. Amazing. Everybody who comes out and plays. Zach Wild came out and played. But everybody who came out and played that night, I really it it really struck a chord with me because you're seeing the actual playing. You're witnessing the talent and you're you're absorbing the energy there live there's no laptops there's no fakery it's all real and so you never know like when you're going to get another opportunity to see someone do their craft at 110 percent like that a couple feet from you or whatever within yeah. in the same room it was it was incredible well, just for the record count do it. just for the record hey yes. breed is playing live body count is playing live that's why sometimes we suck yeah you know, and that's that's just it. But we are we got you know, you got the courage to go out there and I can stop the song in the middle, I can change the song, I can go if I decide I wanna keep the riff going longer and longer and talk, we have all those capabilities and stuff. And I just don't know how cool it is or whatever, but I was kinda like disillusioned that I was hearing playback in rock and in metal. And stuff, and you know, people probably say, "Oh, well, sh-. I'm not hating. I'm just saying that I think that you know, maybe maybe my bubble got bursted a little no, it's bit because <laughs> I, I haven't been piece. backstage that many. I know I was backstage at a big rock band show, and I'm mm-hmm. not gonna say their name, but I was at a big rock band show, and I looked and I was watching, and I was enjoying it, and I looked to the left, and it's like Pro Tools was going, you know, yeah, and I was like, that's not. When, when I'm not hearing and then I got enough people that are engineers that, that know you know what's going on. but hey that's neither here nor there I was in Australia mm-hmm. warp Tour the this is how the kids don't even know it's so blatant the sound engineer for one of the bands goes Hey, uh, play the vocal track and test the monitor and so they're just playing the vocal track of this band through the, the monitors during the, the sound check during the sound check we were getting ready because we were going to do our line check next so our fans aren't necessarily the same fans of the next band because it's a festival so our fans they don't eat they they were like what is that because he can't really hear because the monitors are facing the other way right but he's saying it over the talkback mic play the vocal and they're just playing the lead vocal through the monitors so the guy can hear his own vocal to lip sync to so can lip sync it so everything you see, but that's just one. That's just one illusion. thing, you know. Yeah, it can be an illusion, can. but hey, let's just, let's end it on this good note. My hats go off to all the people who still do it live, and um, I like live. Even in hip hop, me, I live always hated rappers that rapped over their lyrics. You know, play the instrument and rap. I like it live. I, I always yeah. would. Um, although we use backing tracks, we don't have we don't have. Uh, Bands most of the time, but every album I ever made, there's a instrumental album I would do, and I would do that in the studio. I say, "Give me a t." We call a TV track. Give me a TV track, and that's all I will perform over. I will not rap over any of my lyrics. That's Milli Vanilli. I'm not with that. So hats go off to everybody out there that's still doing live music and. You know, say the playback for when you're fucking around doing your music video. That's when you use playback. Right, that's, yeah. that's video. That's music video. And I've seen, I've seen like, uh, I watched some footage of you doing songs in Vegas where you do, you go over the instrumental. But if you go on YouTube and you watch some rap shows, and I used to book a bunch of rap shows, and there was there was times where they didn't even have a DJ where we just had to put in the CD over the regular system. And they did, you know, they would go out there. Well, I still should have been instrumental. The only time that's acceptable is like sometimes you'll do an appearance. And that's not a show. That's an appearance. Say me and Coco will show up at a club and all of a sudden colors will come on. And then everybody starts looking at you, and then they hand you and the it's mic. Cool for that. And that's you kind of cool. like kind of cool sing along. Oh, right, right. That's not yeah. a concert. That's right. not a concert. 
You didn't yeah. pay to see a concert. Yeah. You've paid for an appearance. I might touch the mic with somebody playing one of the records. I think that's <coughs> well. No, if fair. I yeah. if I come if I come to perform. I'm going to bring the instrumental. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But if you kind of put me on the spot someplace and put my record on and then you want me to sing and now here's the mic coming over at me, that's that situation. But once again, hats go off to all the musicians that are out there doing it live. I think that's what the audiences want to see. That's when you're really proving you're a badass. It takes a lot of time and technical uh, uh, it takes a lot to get your guitars and your amps and everything locked in to get that crunch and to get that sound and it's very difficult to do it I mean my band labor over it trying to get it so when the solo comes up it hits the right pitch and all that it's very very hard and so then you see somebody just running a track you're like what's really going on right yeah <coughs> You know, what, you know what I wish they had in rock, which you guys, <coughs> all the hip hop guys, did right? Was you could do an appearance, you could do a walkthrough, mm -hmm. and get paid. Mm -hmm. We could never do that mm -hmm. in rock or metal. If I asked, like, say, you know, when we when we used to have to do these after parties, and you go to after party and you DJ, you have to DJ or you have to do something to get a fee. And I used to say to like a lot of these clubs or bars or whatever that would say, oh, you guys kind of come through after the show. I'd be like, well, why? You know, we're going to bring all these people there. They're going to drink they at your me. bar, and we can't get any cut of that. that we're bringing make, in the crowd. That doesn't make it's sense. It's like rock has this like sense. guilt. A rock has this guilt, or punk rock especially, and hardcore has this guilt about making money, which I wish just would stop because that's bullshit. It, it doesn't know, make sense. You got kids. Not if always you, did that right. Not if you're going to bring. If you're going to say hypothetically, "Yo, it's Jamie. I'm going to be over at Lucy's right after the party. I mean, right after the show." Now. 200 people come over, they buy soda, they buy beer, they buy this, and you ask me to make an appearance, then you pay me right? for an appearance, and you pay me because I shouted it well, out. You put yeah. me on I'm the not fly. Doing it. And you know what? And, and I got to answer, Jamie, for all these people that say, hey, you punk rock, you shouldn't want no money. Hey, check this out. I don't want no money. My kids need it. Yeah. Okay? I got kids. I got a wife. I got family. I got cousins. I got people. People can look at me right now and go, well, I see you on Law & Order. You got money. You don't need money. I'm like, my band members aren't on Law & Order. You know, my, my, my crew, my management. I ain't, on, I ain't on Law & Order. So, but, yeah. yeah, yeah, right. So I got to get paid even if I don't take the money. You know, when, when we talked about your meet and greet on my show, I forgot to make this point. And, and uh, it, you know, a lot of people also don't realize this, especially fans when they complain about the paid meet and greets. These are done by companies who are fans and they are providing a service. So, like, it, it, I love how everybody just assumes that everything just filters right up to the artist. It doesn't. The artist is the last person to get paid. The agents, the managers, the road crew, the bus company, everybody gets paid before the artist. So for, as fans out, fans out there listening, keep that in mind. The best thing you can do is buy the CD. The best thing you can do is go to the concert. And the best thing you can do is buy the T-shirt. That doesn't all filter directly to the to the that's artist. true the merchandising company gonna get his yeah. the, the venue that you're selling it at he's gonna get his the tax man is gonna get know. his oh, so yeah. it, like you said it doesn't filter in your pocket every dime yes you may make a few pennies on it but it's to it's level a, it's to promote the band keep the band fresh keep people thinking saying and seeing the band with a t-shirt I tell people you know? I tell people like this think of it like this every artist you got is a company and every company consists of no less than probably 10 people so if you're Jamie Jasser you're hate breeder I'm Ice-T the Ice-T company has to be paid there's 10 people in my the, in, in, in my world that are counting to pay their rent their, so money has to be made for the company no one person Beyonce is in one person Beyonce's probably 25 people. Easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> she probably has different agents for different career paths. She right. probably has a, a a makeup agent and a, and a, and a clothing agent True. and an appearance agent True. and TV. So, and, and then you True. wonder, well, well, how are these artists, are, they end up broke at the end of the day. I'm like, yo, when, when a fighter walks into a fight and he wins a million dollars, if he walks with a hundred grand of that, 
he, he's lucky. He's lucky out of a million because yeah. he's got trainers. He's got all the people who loaned him money up to that point. He's got people that's provided for him. He's got. It's just a. It's, these are big businesses. Mm-hmm. And whenever you say, and "If hey, you're working with Don King, you got to pay for the towel." Yeah, yeah. So when you go out on the road, <laughs> and, and you know, people say, "Well, you guys are complaining." No, we're not complaining. We're just trying to explain to you on the podcast the reality of what this is. And if you like what. You're getting. I, sometimes I don't really like to call music a product, but I'm. But it is like, a product. But if you go to a, like Starbucks every day and you're getting something that you like, you have no problem giving their money, giving them money every day. So if you like an artist, whether it's a painter or a, or a rapper or a heavy metal band, why is it such an issue to give them a couple bucks? Like I really think the fans need to rethink that stance, especially when they complain about the meet and greet prices or the shirt prices or the CD prices. If you love. Uh, you know, Led Zeppelin or the Beatles, they've sold billions of records, right? You could say, oh, they don't need the money. But still, if you like the product, they deserve your money. You're supporting. If you're supporting the person that you're, 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 you're making it, you're, you're helping them. And just think about it like that. Whoever you think is a star is feeding probably 25 other people that aren't stars. Well, that, like, yes. I like, I like what <laughs> yes, you said, too, Jamie. But if Jamie... And hey, Bree, take six months to make this record. A year. Oh yeah. Okay. A year. <laughs> you ain't getting to paid during that this year. Thirteen to fifteen song. They don't know it ain't done in no week. It costs money to make that. So why yeah. wouldn't you, as a fan, support? The group that you like. And every studio that I've worked with has closed. A lot of them. Not every one, but a lot of them. And then I've seen, you know, A&R guys fired. I've seen it. And, and people can blame the downloading or whatever. Really, I'm not mad at the streaming. I'm not mad at even the downloading because I realize that downloading can be shared like it was with the cassette tape mm-hmm, back mm-hmm, in the day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I went, my friend had the Crush Groove soundtrack. I went and dubbed the tape, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, you know, same with uh, New Jack City soundtrack or, mm-hmm. or Colors or, you know, any of these these great records but eventually you buy a shirt or you go to the concert support or something. you support the support artist something. eventually if you like it I just feel like the way that we never I guess protected our intellectual property was is the reason why a lot of people are in the position they're in now so now you understand why Ice-T does TV makes records Jamie Jasta does hosting does podcasts does this does that you gotta do a lot of different things because Henry Rollins gave me the game back in the day he said whatever your integrity is you don't have to jeopardize that integrity just create another identity and do other jobs so if you don't wanna if I don't wanna ever do pop rap well, maybe I'll just do a rock album. If I don't ever want to do soft rock, well, maybe I'll act. I'll, I'll keep each the integrity of each art form locked in, and then I'll create something else to do. If I right now I'm producing an R and B artist, you know yeah, what I'm saying, Zayn. It ain't an Ice T record. It ain't a body count record. But I happen to like R and B. I mean, you're not gonna get no chick in the bed playing Public Enemy. I mean, I got my moments when I'm listening to Shad Day and Blue Match. I got all those vibes. So I just create other identities to create other revenue streams. Because if I want a swimming pool. Motherfucker, I want a swimming pool. And I'm not so pumped that I'm against having nice things. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You know, I think rock and roll is the Ferrari. You know, I think that's part Mm. of it. But you have to make your decisions how you feel about life to take those, get that money. And the fans got to realize if you stop giving the money then the product or the source of the product will stop you give up there it's just like any like mom and pop restaurant if you don't go and you don't support them they're going to close down and then the chain restaurant's going to pop up bottom line if you got a record deal let's just break it down if we put out the body count album and a label puts it out and it doesn't sell enough records they're not going to want to do another album and that'll be the end of the band Simple as that. They just like we not giving y'all another budget. They're whoop. That's the end of the band. You know the artist Tyrese. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's an actor too. Yeah. I remember I was early days of Twitter. I was following him, and he went on this. He he drops a lot of knowledge. I give mm-hmm. that guy a lot of respect because his album got leaked, and it was unfinished. 
and someone just did him real dirty like at the studio or whatever mm-hmm. like leaked his stuff and and he put out like a, either a statement or a video or whatever and he's like look see this is why I don't fuck around with this music shit anymore this is why I'm gonna go do whatever I think he's in like Fast and the Furious or I think he has a couple film franchises mm-hmm. or something but he's like this is why I don't fuck around with it anymore because it's not a re- like like nobody would go do that to say like someone with an oil painting like mm-hmm. he, you know you're not gonna just go try to sell an unfinished you know Picasso or whatever mm-hmm. it's, he, he really made a lot of points about you know, he was hurt he felt that yeah. man he was pissed I understand and, and, it and now the album never came out the finished copies never made and so all his fans of his music were like well what the fuck why, why, why aren't you gonna put it out and he's, he's like cause I'm gonna go do acting and I'm gonna do other stuff because it, it literally like just burnt him out well, he did a good job from a Coca Cola commercial. <laughs> did he? <laughs> Always. No, but, but 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 he he has a point. He made sense. He made and, sense. And, he and, said, and, "You're going to steal my music and push it out, and I'm doing it in the studio that I'm done. paying that I'm paying for, and someone leak it out, which no engineer know how it got out. Then I'm not going to do music. You anymore. know what it is? My a, fans lost. A lot of your fans are haters. Always. They're haters too. Always. So they, they like yeah, you for haters a minute. Confused no, fan. they like you for yeah. a minute, then they hate that you're winning. They hate, so they're like, oh, well, we took it, and you got everything else going on for you in the world, and you got a great life, and I don't, and you shouldn't, and so what? Ha ha, we took your record, and, you know, they want to see you have a hard time. It's, it's, it's just wrong. And, you know, but at the end of the day, T- Tyrese is going to be like, you know what? Whatever. That's your loss. I'm going to go off. I'm going to continue to be successful. And the boy can sing. Yeah, that boy's dope. Yeah. Hey, but Jamie, stick around and keep talking because we got to get to more. I mean, we can, Jamie Jass is in the house. Hey, Breed, this motherfucker's not a motherfucking game. He knows everybody in the business. He's diversified. And he plays live. Oh, I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, 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 he's, 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 he's something else. This motherfucker's Thank something you. else. He's in the building. Okay. <laughs> The other thing we hate is getting cut up by razors. That's why I use Bevel. Bevel is the first and only shaving system for men with coarse and curly hair. They sent Mick and I a box and it's dope. You get the super slick stainless steel razor, a shaving brush, priming oil, shaving cream, restoring balm, and 20 Bevel blades. Bevel is how real players get a great shave. Mick also loves Bevel. Every other time I see this guy, he got cuts on his face because he uses the wrong razor. Now that he found Bevel, he's shaving his face with it and he's shaving his head with it. The man even went to his barber shop and said, do not touch me with anything but that Bevel. This stuff is the real deal. Also, I love their founder, Tristan Walker. He's a real inspirational cat. Tristan grew up in the projects of Queens and got a job at Foursquare when the company was just tiny because he loved the app and he wouldn't take no for an answer. A month after moving to New York and joining the company, he became the head of business development. After Foursquare became a sensation, he created Bevel because nobody was making shaving products for men with coarse curly hair like us. So you should definitely check out his recent CNN interview, which we'll link to our show notes. For 20% off your first box of Bevel supplies, go to GetBevel.com and use the offer code ICE. Man, this would make a great holiday present, too, for your loved one, all right? That's G-E-T-B-E-V-E-L.com, offer code I-C-E. Please support them since they support the podcast. This is the next segment of Final Level Podcast number 21, and this is Games. Well, you know I don't play no games. <laughs> yeah, that, he that plays Angry doing, Birds. That ain't doing And weird no, shit. Flappy Bird, man. Flappy Leave Bird. Leave my man alone. Y'all I've been, can't get past seven hurdles that y'all bump in your head, so I don't give a fuck. Y'all want to play with the control all day and on. That's a fucking boring shit to me. I got back into I I, I got the new Xbox One. 
I'm waiting on the. Two of them? I'm okay. waiting on Advanced Warfighter to come out because you know that's what I do. I play that that shit. But I I went back into my video games. This is something that people don't do. They like they play the games. They might have finished them or not, but then they just move to the next game. I got so many games back in there. So you know, over the summer I was playing Dead Rising, an old game, but I pulled out Borderlands Two. And Borderlands Two is this ill game where you just try to get more more levels so you can get these guns and these certain guns. Oh, like yeah, that's you, your kind of game. You, you got, got a level fifty one gun going against a twenty one bad guy. You just annihilate him. And they shoot. You got these guns that shoot fire that catch people on fire, and you get to see the light jump off of them in numbers. And you got some that shoot this green sludge that is like. It's like acid and stuff. And I've just been playing these Borderland, And I've been playing, uh, they have these DLC packs that I've been playing. And I've just been having fun playing it. And it's a weird thing that happens in the game because winning these games doesn't matter to any yeah. fucking body. <laughs> it matters to you. you, you no, to you. <laughs> it's serious fucking business. Yeah. To, to win that. L- to win that. L- no, but no one else in the world cares. <laughs> but to win, to beat that boss, you're, I'm sleeping. I'm dreaming of ways to kill these things. And it's such a weird warp that your brain goes in. Right now, I want to play. I'm addicted. Yeah. I want to play. And so you sound like a little kid. I right? said, so "I want to play. <laughs> I want to play." But it's it it doesn't matter to anyone. You can't even bring somebody else in your house over and say, "Look, I just beat this level." It don't like, mean nothing to us. Yeah. Can you replay it? Like, can you do like an like, instant can you replay? Redo it? No, it just doesn't matter. But have you, you got to win. Max Payne. I love Max Payne. I play. I <laughs> went to Rockstar Games, and they had me in there playing fans, and like thirteen-year-olds are on there, like kicking the shit out of my team, swearing at us, fucking with us, and I was like, man, this is. But to them, it was everything. They were like, because I tweet, I, you know, I tweeted out like, all right, I'm at Rockstar Games. We, you know, s- you know, add me on your, you know, gamer tag or whatever, and, and put it up there, and we'll and we'll fight. But you're playing online now. Yeah, that, that matters a little bit because you are playing against a human person. I'm just talking about if you're just even if you're playing a campaign, right? Right. No one cares, but you so. Oh, it's such a weird warp that that game shit puts you in. And even online, like you playing Max Payne against them kids and so fucking what? You lost. Yeah. Max Payne 3. It was, it's it's a dope game. And, and all of us, do you play like Red Dead Redemption in those ga- Rockstar games? All those games? Rockstar games. They're great games. They're the OGs from Grand Theft Auto. I was the final character. I was yeah, one of the you final were a voice, characters. right? Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I was the crazy, the guy, that the rapper that lost his house in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. You know, <laughs> yeah. cracked yeah, out. He really, he really definitely picks up the <laughs> controls and go in. Hey, look. Yeah. He look, enjoys it. My though. furniture has been taken out of this house, reappointed posted they put it back in the couch goes over there where my chair is i left my chair in front of the tv just so i can play that game that chair is only there for me to play video games i don't give a fuck no one sits in my couch watch the throne so i'm waiting on uh uh, on a new gears i mean not gears of war the new call of duty and in the meantime i've been playing borderlands too and uh if you haven't gotten Borderlands 2. It's an old game. It's been out a year or so ago. This is one of those games that's bottomless. You can play them forever and ever and ever, and it's really fun. I'm, and then you can replay the game with a different character, but people always want to know what game I'm playing right now, and that's what I'm playing, and that was games. <laughs> This segment is one of the favorite segments on Final Level Podcast. This is called I'm Not a Hater, but, but I, I hate, hate shit. shit. And there's a lot of shit I hate. And, uh, you know, like we always say, a hater is somebody that's envious. That, like 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 Jamie said, a misguided, twisted fan that <laughs> wants to be you. This is not what this segment is about. This is shit that just pisses us the fuck off. Mickey, you, you were telling me about something that happened to you the other day. What do you hate? I hate these goddamn New York City traffic cameras. <laughs> You're riding downtown, the light turns yellow, or we call amber color. It takes a picture and say you ran a red light. Now, that's cool. 
<laughs> but I'm up in the Bronx minding my business. I'm kind of thirsty. I pull over. There's a bus stop, but there's no bus there. There's nothing there. I pull in. I run in the store. I come home. And four days later, maybe a week, then I say a week, I get a ticket stating I parked in front of a no standing bus stop of a traffic <laughs> camera taking a picture when nobody else is there. What? Uh, listen, I said I like personal interest, but please, <laughs> these traffic cameras, y'all got to slow down, man. The cameras yeah. are everywhere. How about you, Jamie? Did you get a ticket coming over the ice from Connecticut? I think I might have, yeah. What you did know you what? do? Run a red light? Yeah, I think turning on to like Hudson Terrace and one of these streets, I was like, and man. took a motherfucking picture and it, no they got, it. they got it right there. Oh, yeah, like, they, they, got got it. they got one in the sky. Too, they got one on the ground and in the sky. <laughs> oh, they got one in the. They got the. I thought they had ghetto birds in the sky. They got drones. They got, they got, they got the drones. They got a new, in a minute. They got drone cameras, so like every car will have a drone floating over it, and so if it fucks up in any way, it'll just. <laughs> well, I, I'll take the traffic camera, but I got to tell a little story while you're here, Jamie. You know, I'm hanging out with my guy Ice T. Oh no, got me a nice Dodge Journey. Yeah, you damn right, Dodge Journey family car, man. Have a good time, <laughs> man. You know, went on out to the club with Ice and Coco. We all oh, we tossing up me, Ice, Coco, Trash. I go across the street whoa 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 there's a sticker on my car <laughs> I'm like don't move the car you are cause severe damage so I look around they had a motherfucking boot on my car because <laughs> of the traffic camera lights that I never saw the tickets I got $1,100 in tickets and don't uh, even know about it so, so we're in there having a good time it starts to rain a little bit and I don't see Mickey so I'm looking for Mickey you know we, we go out we we kind of look, keep keep an eye on each other. Just safety precautions. You got to do that in New York. I'm like, where's Mick? I ain't seen Mick in a while. You know, far I know, he's in the bathroom fighting niggas or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I go. I'm like, you see my man? They're like he's outside. So I go outside. The nigga got the got the sad face look, looking at me. I ain't had no money, man. He looked at me like... See, that's why he does those appearances and they tell me we shouldn't get paid. That means I wouldn't get no money to get the boot off the car. Yeah. I understand, fans. Gotta pay for something. Buy a t-shirt. What the hell? Buy a t-shirt. Buy a keychain. So Mickey got the boot. So I go... I go, we were with Tretch that night. I said, yo, Tretch, come out here. Mickey got a boot. So we thought the shit was funny, right? So oh, I didn't think it was funny. <laughs> and again, Jamie, I never saw any tickets, I swear. I didn't get no $1,100 worth. It's the traffic cameras that are taking it when you're not around. So we get the, we go around. So now Tretch want to take a picture with the boot. <laughs> take a picture Instagram of Mickey. Instagram it. Or- hey, yeah, yeah, Mick, yeah. Mickey, we got the blackmail shot on you yeah. and shit. Big Wooly Mick ain't got no money. So Mickey gets on the phone. They go, we need $1,100. For what? So we like, Mickey's like, how am I going to pay you $1,100? Well, you can come down here or you can give us a credit card over the phone. Do you know oh. that we paid the credit, we paid the, the, the thing, and electronically, the boot popped off no. the car. Wow. <laughs> right, Mick? Yeah, the motherfuckers. That's Let's some, sci- the, that's nah, some they, sci-fi they, they're futuristic. They're the best, man. They're Tell the them best. what they did. How did the boot come on? They popped. They said, okay, now you... They said, don't you try to move. Just go over there and press... No, no, no disrespect. Like, like a combination. Press one, two, and watch it come off. You did one, two, and then fall off. I said, so what am I supposed to do with the boot now? They said, well, if you don't bring it, it's going to be $500 if you don't get it in 48 what? hours. I, so I take the boot off and bring it back to you? Traffic oh camera, my man. God. Traffic they I'm boot you and they make you bring it wow. back to them. Yeah, they put the boot on and tell you to bring it back. And guess what? Ain't nobody wrote no tickets. It was the traffic cameras. Yeah, they're out there. So Die Mickey, what you hate? I'm not a hater, but, but I, hate. I hate traffic cameras, man, for no reason. Jamie hates it too. He got a ticket. Watch yeah. it be 115. They're gonna send it to my house. <laughs> yeah, what's your plate number? Yeah, they they got me. Okay. We'll see. Fine Level Podcast number 21 with Jamie Jasta representing my motherfucking man. And this is the philosophy segment. And, you know, when we were earlier talking today, you know, Jamie and I were talking about fans. And, you know, we listen to our fans. Definitely. We listen to the people that support us. But at some point, you got to kind of like say, hey, look. I'm the artist. I got to do what I'm going to do. And if you guys really like me, you're going to support me. 
I can't just you can't just fall into following everything they want. It's like you that's why they're following you is because they like what you do. So what was the you hit me with the philosophy. You said there was a coach that said one time, how did it go? Yeah, if anybody uh knows the name of the coach, maybe they could Google it or whatever and let us know. But the, there was a famous coach who said if you listen to the fans too much, you wind up sitting with them. And that hit me because, especially in sports, where these guys are under the microscope all the time, why didn't you put this guy in? Why didn't you hire this guy as defensive coordinator or whatever? Mm-hmm. If, you, if you're listening to every Tom, Dick, and Harry on the street, yeah, you're not going to have a job right. much longer. Yeah, and as an artist, you know, what you want is just have confidence in our moves. You know what I'm saying? It's like... When I'm making a record, man, I mean, I just got to put it out there and hopefully they'll appreciate it. I can't keep going to them and saying, what do you want me to do? Because for all I know, my fan also might be somebody else's fan. He might want me to sound like that other person. So I think, you know, when you come out that day and, and you got on that outfit and your friend goes... What are you doing in that outfit? You got to have the courage to say, I like this. This is me. Love it or hate it. And 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 guess what? They'll probably go out and get the damn outfit after they challenge you. And I think as an artist, you have to have the courage to just stand on yourself. And I think your fans will challenge you to see if you're flappable, if you'll move. But I think that the more, like you even just told me the story about you doing a remix for some rappers. Yeah. And some of your fans had a problem with it. But you're like, I like rap. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. What? So, so, I mean, how, how do you, what, what happens in your brain when that happens? I just think that change is very hard for people to deal with. Change and growth is hard. As you know, you see like a lot of people that aren't, especially that aren't into music or into art like people who are who are into sports especially and maybe that's why this quote relates back to a coach mm-hmm. it's they you know it's hard when their player retires like we were talking about Jeter or it's hard when you know a coach leaves or whatever but in music it's especially hard because you're dealing with creative people like you gotta be kind of a creative people to like music or art or film mm-hmm. and so if if your favorite action movie director starts directing you know um, romantic kid comedies. film yeah like with actually I was thinking when you had Chris you can't Rock say on. that you can't say that did Ice Cube do a lot of kid film wasn't it good but see but wasn't a lot of good? people but a lot of yeah, people have of problems fans. with it. But he but has that's called leadership. Then, but he's right. going to be a leader. He's All right, not but be look, a but look right. at Eddie Murphy. Like, do you want to see a raunchy, fucked up, crazy comedy with Eddie Murphy, or do you want to see like Doctor Doolittle or or? Well, if you're I a real take, fan, I you respect it. I could take both okay. on Eddie Murphy. I but, could take both. But that's because we're forward thinking okay. people, exactly. and we're true fans. Right. right. We can we can separate. Right. It. Some people just want the recipe how it is, and they and as soon as you put another ingredient in the recipe, they're like, it's ruined. You know, or they think like the... You know what? Speaking of that, I had somebody that really hated the remake of Institutionalized. You know, this guy, he hated it like mm. like I had done some sacrilegious shit to it. And I'm like, well, Suicidal likes it. Yeah. Right, the band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, oh, what's your problem with it? And it was just, you know, I guess maybe he didn't like our band or he didn't like my references to the new things. He wanted it the way it was. Like, if I was going to remake it, I should have done it just like it. And, it, yeah, you're right. It exploded his fucking head. He couldn't handle it. Uh, I think you have to teach your friends. Not, see, let's exchange the word fans for friends. Yeah, supporters. Your friends. If if you if you listen to your friends too much, you're gonna end up being where your friends are. Sitting on the couch complaining. Right. So I think as a person, as a human being, I always preach this, everybody knows my main word is courage and importance. Have the courage to be you. Just have the courage to tell your best friend, I really don't care that you don't like this T V show I like, I like it. I don't care if this music bothers you. It's what I like. That's why they make headphones. Yeah. And and just also, like you said, forward thinking, understand that your favorite favorite person is going to do things that you may not like. People lost their mind when Chris Maloney from my show decided to go off and do something else. They're like, you're on Law & Order. You're a cop forever. I'm like, he's an actor. 
Yeah. The man wants to go do comedy. Yeah. You know, I guess think of Jamie Foxx. He won an Academy Award. He's a comedian. People was used to him doing that. Jamie said, I want to do serious acting. People are, you should be doing serious acting. You're a comedian. That's not for you. Motherfucker, I want an Oscar. Okay. And when he sung a good song, he sung a damn good song. Yeah, he could sing. So I think it's the, it's your job to live your life and have the courage to do it. And, you know, Maybe what I'm telling you is something that's going to make you say, you know what, man? I, Ice is right, man. You know, I like I, doing my rap. I do what the fuck I want to yeah. do. I'm doing it. And if you motherfuckers like me or not, and if that's going to make you not like me, well, then fuck off. No, a, a, lot of, a lot of times what I'll do now is if I did, like I did a remix for a girl who's kind of like synth, electro, pop, I just didn't put my name out there and I didn't promote it. I just was behind the scenes. And that I get a lot of satisfaction from. You know, create another name. Yes. Create another yeah, name. Because I can beat. produce like an cool artist. Cave. And I Become Dr. Octagon yeah. or something. Yeah, there you go. Because you yeah. don't have... Cause a lot of people, though, a lot of just the X. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> people want you to like co-sign something, but they don't realize that that comes with a lot of yeah, but other when do, elements. But when, you like, do, but when you do the remix, sir, in all honesty, that's why they asking you to do it. They need you to co-sign that you did it. This don't fuck with use, something you don't like. Even if you use an alias, it, it's still cool. But you can't just not put nothing like. You know, the music is there, but they're like, well, who did it? Now, when they hear it, if it's Jasper X, yeah, they're like, wow, that's, that's just kind of That's hot. Jamie. Yeah. That's Jamie that's shit, too. And, he, and and I think your real fans are going to appreciate the growth. I did a, um, I did a remix, like a techno rec remix of Reckless with this band, Diaz, and um, people dug it. You know, But I think that's the one thing. It's like I've really driven it into my fans' heads to not try to pigeonhole me. Yeah. I've driven. They, if I decide I'm going to do stand-up comedy, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do R&B. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I fucking want to do till I die. Yeah, no risk, no reward. I mean, I did it with my Jossa record. When people heard me singing, clean singing, they right. said, oh, he's using auto-tune, this and that. I didn't use any auto-tune. <laughs> you can <on> sing. <laughs> right. I, I just, I, I did the lessons. I did the, all the takes. I mean, some of them, I had to do like 50 takes of some stuff. Mm. The song, they said, oh, your voice will never be on commercial radio. The song I did with Zach Wilde, it made it like probably to number 37, 38 right. on commercial radio. commercial radio. But, and I didn't use like hate read um, as the promotion vehicle. I didn't like go on every hate read social network right, I didn't try to use, right, I didn't try okay. to push it down those people's throats and, and that's what I think you need to do if you are an established artist like if Kerry King or Tom Araya from Slayer wanted to do uh, you know An acoustic record right exactly <laughs> it would be like career suicide for them but if they if they called it something else or if they didn't promote it through the Slayer channels maybe it could stand on its own well the, the per, per, perfect example of, I, cool. I didn't do body count as ice tea no, it's body count. It's body count. It's not, right? yeah. they, I didn't just, they started putting ice tea in body, body count, count yeah. because they want to use the name. But it's, the group is called Body, body count. count. My name ain't in it. And I did that. Body count. Yeah. I did that because I wanted people to hear the record and then go, that's ice singing. See? You know, and get that as a second thing. But let's just listen to the record and stuff. But yeah, you have to be. But, but I, I refuse to let a motherfucker on the sideline tell me what I can or can't do. <laughs> yeah. Only thing I'm gonna do is what I wanna do. Now, if you bring me something, if it's whack, I ain't fucking with it. You'd be like, yo, this guy really wants your cosign. I've had friends, close friends, that I just can't cosign they shit. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yo, mm -hmm. dog, this shit is not that good, man. Yeah. You know, I'll co-sign you as my friend. True. But I'm not gonna get up and tell people, buy this, this shit is dope, this shit is, you know, because, the one thing I have is a little bit of credibility, a little bit of honesty. That's my brand. That's why I'm getting these voiceovers. That's why I'm getting these other bullshits because people kind of connect me with honesty. I used to tell the truth. That's that's valuable today. Yeah, absolutely. With people that'll say anything for anything, you know. So philosophy. our philosophy is. If you listen to your fans slash friends too much, you'll end up sitting in the bleachers or you'll end up being where they are. On the sidelines, yeah. And I, that connects to one of my earlier philosophies is only take advice from people that you respect. Mm -hmm. um, 
I respect my fans, but I don't necessarily know if you know the right moves for me to make career wise. Right. Mm-hmm. You dig? So I always go back to myself and I just make my judgment and I and in your life, man, just have the courage. I keep saying courage because it takes it to be exactly who you want to be. Don't let your friends push you away from something you like. Because, like somebody was trying to tell me the other day something wasn't cool. I'm like, how the who fuck are you? you telling me yeah. what's cool? I'm the coolest motherfucker here <laughs> right who now. Are you to tell how are you that? telling me what's cool? Where's your cool credentials? There should be no such thing <laughs> as like guilty pleasures. Like people ask me that in interviews all the time. Oh, what's your guilty pleasure? What's something on your iTunes that we wouldn't expect or that you'd be embarrassed of? And I'm like, there's nothing that I'm embarrassed of. Like if I like something, I just like something. Like it makes me feel good. Like I, I, I got Weezer on there. I got Earth, Wind, and Fire. I got Marvin Gaye. There's not anything. I got no doubt Fuck on there. Tell them come yeah. over to the house and watch Taboo 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, watch, we'll, watch, we'll watch General Hospital, Alan, with, yeah. uh, with uh, yeah. actually Passions. That's what I wanted oh, to ask you, man. Oh, Did you ever watch Passions? There these go. They, no, these motherfuckers are about to uh-uh. talk uh-uh. Uh-uh. soap uh-uh. operas. No, we, we like General Hospital, One Life to Live, as the World Turn. I mean, look, this is sweet, serious people over here. question I want to ask Jamie, though, is how the world did he get into podcasting? Oh well, let's that's wrap it up. Well, why don't we just wrap you it up? Guys, we got we yes, got we, we got to wrap it up. All right, we got to wrap it up because I got to go. That's okay. a great way to end it. You we guys got, help okay. me. Thank okay. you. No, 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 no. Hey, oh, so oh. this is what it is. You've been listening to the Final Level Podcast number twenty one. We've been kicking it with Jamie Jasta. You know, you see, there's a lot of similarities between me and him, Mickey. This oh, motherfucker yeah. does what he wants to do, and it's continued to find new shit. Oh yeah, do. see, he he, uh, he adventures out. He adventures out to other and things. You, After been twenty a huge, years, huge inspiration to me. I see. twenty yeah. years of hate breed. Yeah, and Jamie Damn. has his own podcast. Now, I want to ask Jamie about that. Okay, one. Yeah, because let's go in. How yes. did you get into podcasting? After I called in your show, okay. I said, I'm going to go to your site. You know, I heard their ad read for Squarespace and the whole thing. And I was, I went to your site. And I was like, man, this looks good. And it was it, finallevel.com. I think it was. Ice T finallevel.com. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so I go to the contact and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit Alex up. I'm going to, I'm going to hit up Paragon. So Quattro. you didn't know Alex? No. This is this is this dude's get down. He's not a game. Because, <laughs> and, and I and I and I said, you know what? Because I I had been offered radio shows and I've been offered like smaller TV shows and I've done a lot. I've done pilots that never got picked up. You know, <laughs> like heavy metal. You know, American Idol wannabe shows and things like that that just never panned out. And I could see that this was a an upstart company. They were doing something cool for you guys. That's forward thinking and it's outside the box. It's not like all the other podcast companies. And I'm re- I'm at the point now where I just want to be able to share in the ad revenue, or if I create ad revenue, I want to be able to get a, a little cut piece, of it. Piece of the action. Yeah, I don't think that's greedy. I don't think that. I think that in, if you look at the long term, if I'm if I'm going to endorse a product, it's going to be something that I like. I'm not going to endorse something that I don't like, and so. Nobody should have any beef with that. But back on Headbangers Ball days, you're seeing Bullflex ads. Well, Bullflex ain't cutting me a check, you know. Yeah, and then just not- for people to understand, I mean, you know, we're very transparent. When you see a, a free podcast like ours or Jamie's podcast, there's ads. The ads pay us based on how many listeners we have. Basically, that's it. If nobody listens, then they don't pay us no money. If we do, we can make a nice income. But it's based on listeners. So it's it's a job that's really based on how that's why we get on here and we really work. We want y'all to watch, listen and doesn't cost you a dime. But the more listeners. So to somebody like Jamie or myself, that's a good deal. It, it's based on your work. And we have the access like today. Right. Or um, mm-hmm. earlier, previously on your show, you've had someone like Chris Rock. You have that access. That's your your legacy you've built up your relationship that you built up and that's why so many people want to hear you because you'll never hear that type of knowledge and that wisdom coming through on a different show because a, a lot of those people don't have that type of they're connection. not friends right mm-hmm. and and that's why I think I've been able to have 
the little bit of podcast success with my stuff because I have the access. So I'm at a festival and I got Tom Araya from Slayer. I got Chris Jericho, the wrestler. I got the the kid from A Day to Remember or, or like, um, you know, I'm coming up. I got Vinnie Paul on the show and, and comedians and different because I have the access. And, and, and anybody who's successful, I really feel like will share the abundance i i've well, that's what that's what ice is doing in myself with this podcast we share personal things about ice to you don't know him yes. so now you get an opportunity to really hear him sometimes you can call in and talk to him you're not gonna be able to do that while he's riding in a car down the yeah. block and if you're a true family or friend i don't like call people fans that shit really irks me but family or friend you're able to reach out to the ice tea final Air podcast so now you hear us on the podcast through Alex at Paragon Collective. And, and now you, you got the phone and, up and call yeah, this guy. I was guy. like, because everybody kept telling me, especially after I was on your podcast, that people were like, why don't you do your own? But also, you guys have a lot of life wisdom and you guys have seen a lot and done a lot. And so that's why you have the listeners and the base that you have. And there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to benefit from that because all these, whether it's Squarespace or whatever sponsors, they're gaining your fan base's support. Well, it's also work. I mean, you see, we've been here all day. We've been yeah, doing this all yeah. day. You know, who people don't have time to do, you know, you, I just feel like you get what you earn, you know, oh. and, and, and the only way we, uh, in, in, in podcasting, you earn is if you get listeners. So you can get on here all day. If you suck and nobody wants to listen to you, then that's the end of the game. No, but it's like Jamie said, a commercial radio can call you. You go in there and they give you a couple of dollars. Yeah, and they mm -hmm. edit everything. No, no, they give you a couple of dollars and when they tired of you, they put somebody else in that spot. You know, you yeah. sound too old, we get rid of them. See, you create your own platform. Like I said, you are a person that likes to do different things. You were on a tour doing an interview with us <laughs> and said, damn, I like this myself. How they doing it? Who they got it from? Yeah. I can do this. You um, bought your unit. You go yeah. out. It's very Sque squeaky wheel gets the grease. I just had Rob Zombie on. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is a guy who has, like, no number one movies, you know, huge, you know, Halloween. The man, he's the man. Yeah. And, and, and just to, for him to give me the time and for me to soak up the knowledge was so inspiring. You know, he's fan. he was a fan backing a movie, so the fans were paying to get the movie produced and, mm -hmm. and, and made, and that's because why? Because they know his product, they know his track record. You know, they got House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, and so they know that this new movie's gonna be off the hook, and they trust it and they support it, and so that's what, you know, I saw with your show. Like, I thought, you know, you guys, you trust that this is in good hands, mm -hmm. and, um, and, hey, you and know what? We happy to have you, you as, a, as, a, as a brother on Paragon with us doing this. You know, everybody can do their own because no matter how much we, our show's different than yours. Your show's different than ours. We just connected to Combat Jack. We had Al Toucher on here. He's got a podcast. And I think the sooner the podcasters understand they can parlay off each other, uh, it'll help us all, you know, but... We're just glad that we're starting to make podcasts in hip. Yeah. You know, people, this is very, very new to a lot of people. And I think that in the future, you know, like like you said, well, what, 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 like the guy was saying, who are our other guests? He said, so, well, what TV show you watch? Well, I think pretty soon people say, well, what podcast you listen to? Mm -hmm, like, yeah. it's just, it's just going to be normal and stuff and and like another thing this what you just said is when Chris Rock was here the jewel he dropped was the wealth isn't the money it's the relationships mm. and the relationships you have though the ability to connect to a Chris Rock or like you say a Rob Zombie or somebody and them just to give you that solid do you understand if they don't know you that's going when I did the art of rap I would let someone try to do the art of rap at with with money it wouldn't be the same. No, no, no. It, it would cost the same, them millions but it of dollars. It wouldn't be the same. It'd yeah. just be money spent. This was done on relationships. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the interviews wouldn't be as mm -hmm. real and it wouldn't be I'm as saying. genuine because and 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 watch watch normal Rob Zombie like interviews. He's sometimes he's real cagey with the interview. He's real guarded. Mm -hmm. But in our conversation, relaxed, opening up about behind yeah, the scenes time. stuff. Not, and that's what I saw with you and Chris Rock. It's not commercial radio. Yeah. And, and I don't want to know. I'm not. There's no gossip. It's not commercial radios. It's having good times amongst 
family and friends. I'm not going to have like, my friend over here and then talk some shit he right, don't... find out shit that you don't want to be talking that's about. That's that corny yeah. shit. It's corny. Who like, needs Like to I said, that? even like with Ice, same thing with you. You have fans... After 20 years of doing hate breed, trust and believe, they want to say hi. Yeah. They don't want to see you on tour. They don't want to keep hitting you on Twitter or Facebook. Now they got an opportunity to say hi to you personally. Hey, oh shit. You know what I mean? People fall hell over heels when they say, oh my God, I don't even know what to say. I got iced tea on the phone. Yeah. yeah. That's special. Yeah. yeah. That goes a long way. Yeah, More so I, than, I agree. You know, just but you know what? You know what? The screen. problem is, Mickey. What's the problem, baby? The problem is, right now, people are caught up in bullshit. People are caught up in all the hype that the media has created. They're not concentrating on what's really going on in the world. So we're going to end this show with the one and only Jamie Jasta featuring on the new Body Count Manslaughter album, the song is called Pop Bubble Full of Bullshit. Listen to the words and learn. We out of here. I'm fed up with this shit, man. I'm going to say it. Ain't nobody going to say it. I'm going to say it. Motherfuck this shit. Y'all whores. Music ain't saying shit no more. Read my lips. Read my lips. Read my lips. You ain't talking about shit. America's losing their cribs. Why you bragging about the shit you did or the shit you buy? Most of it lies. Yeah, I know and you know I know. The government's tapping the net. Why you rapping about your car and jet? I miss PE, I miss groups like Rage. Your pop shit's making me physically sick. Obama did eight years, cuz. Why you singing about bottles and clubs? This shit don't make no sense. Most of your fans can't pay their rent. You've been sold a fantasy. You're living in a bubble full of bullshit. A pop bubble full of bullshit. You've been sold a fantasy. You're living in a bubble full of bullshit. A pop bubble full of bullshit. You're living in a bubble. You've been sold a fantasy. Little do you know the price we pay. So sick or regarded children's stuff. Love veterans come out to the real war. Live in a dead one for all time. Some bankers steal. Some media love. Now you've been bought and fucking sold. Feel the steel like a temple. Or it goes. Music's come a long way. Guys have gone from fight to power to what does Kim Kardashian have on today? Fuck's the matter with you? Pop shit's driving me fucking crazy. And I'm not talking about people that start out being pop stars. I'm talking about so-called hardcore motherfuckers that'll do anything to get on the radio. Eat a dick. Body count, motherfucker. I can't fake it. This shit's whack. I say this to your face. This ain't behind your back. You corny motherfuckers can't look me in the eye. Cause most of you fake and you're living a lie. You're living in a lie. The cops are still twisted. The laws are still fucked. The rich are still greedy. Government's still corrupt. You're living in a fucking lie. The news is all gossip. People have no hope. So what you making cash? Your soul is still broke. You've been sold a fantasy. You're living in a bubble full of bullshit. A pop bubble full of bullshit. You've been sold a fantasy. You're living in a bubble full of bullshit. A pop bubble full of bullshit. You're living in a bubble. Bitch, motherfuckers don't want no fight. You motherfucking pants too tight. You'll be in for a few and then you're through. Cause pop ain't got no love. So what? Your shit's in the club. You want me to say some names? I'm too seasoned in this game. That only give a pop fame. Fuck bloggers. Fuck bullshit hype. Ice is on one tonight. Check my history. Ain't shit changed. Still OG and I'm still the same. That's how I'm living. That's 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 how I'm living. That's how that's 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 how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living. That's how that's 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 how I'm living. That's 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 how I'm living. That's 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 how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living.